Well, it is 10 o'clock. Uh, Diana's here. Dan's here. Tom's here. I'm here. Y'all are here. So let's get this party started. Um, all right. Hi, everybody. This is, uh, I'm, I'm Tish Hicks. I'm the Master Sensei of the VO Dojo here in Burbank, California. And this is Ask the Sensei. It's our monthly free Q&A webinar um, with uh, myself, uh, Sensei, and um, our beloved techno sensei, Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Um, and we all, each month we invite um, one of our colleagues, our esteemed colleagues to join us and answer your questions. So we're really, really excited to welcome Tom Aglio, who is a friend and colleague from, um, I know him through Voice Actors of New York. Um, and he's been, he's been a dojo, dojo around, about the dojo guy as well. So um, really excited to have you here. Tom um, has been, um, has been making great strides. He'll, he'll tell you, he'll tell you about it. <laughs> but um, I was really excited to have him here to share his insights about how he's been marketing himself and, um, and things like that. So we'll answer questions about whatever is on your mind. And um, Tom has that particular specialty. So, um, and, um, and Diana Suko is our team member who's here. Um, she'll just be in the back if, if there's things that you have questions about in, in the chat, she can be manning that. Um, most importantly, we've got questions lined up. So um, uh, probably if you're here, you know a little bit about the dojo, full training program designed to guide, support, connect, accelerate you every step of the way from I don't know to working pro. We have our development division and our working pro division. So wherever you are, we can help you get to where you want to go. Um, more about that later. Um, Dan, tell us about you, and then we'll, we'll introduce Tom, and we'll get to some questions. Yeah, hi. I'm Dan Leonard, the home studio master. I've been helping people develop home voiceover studios for over 15 years after a career in broadcasting and a lot of other nonsense. Uh, and... Uh, if you need help with a home studio or if you have a question about it, I'm here to answer those. And I'm also here professionally to help you out if you need professional help or a consultation. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> and Tom, tell us a little bit. Tell us a little bit. We, we've got our taglines, but <laughs> you can tell us your origin story and a little bit about what's up for you. And um, Sure. So excited to have you here. Sure. So yeah, so hi everyone, I'm Tom. I'm from New York. I'm a voice talent here in New York. Um, you know, I'm sure like a lot of people here, I was a, a theater guy for forever. Um, you know, and I always loved like cartoons and video games and stuff and, and voiceover was just kind of like that thing that I'd always wanted to do, but I didn't really know how to do it. Um, and then, you know, being in New York, it's not the biggest like cartoon and, and, and video game, you know, city and everything like that but you know you take what you can get and I started doing a lot of commercials and narration and e-learning um, and that has really really been just tremendous for my business and it's really really helped a lot um, and the way I get a lot of my work you know I have my agents I have my you know I'm on, online and stuff like that um, but I get a lot of my work through marketing through direct marketing cold uh, cold marketing is what I really really specialize in um, I'm actually testing something out, which I'll, I'll give you guys the scoop on. Um, and I also do a lot of social media marketing as well. Um, the, the main thing I can say is just top of mind and presence. Just be present and let people know that you are present and you're there. And especially now at the home studio with everything going on. Um, marketing really is as easy as that. I tell everybody, if you've ever made a phone call in your life or have ever sent an email in your life, you know how to market. Um, you know, there's definitely some best practices and stuff, but it's something I really believe in and it has really, really helped take my career kind of to the next level. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, so much of what we do here at the dojo is about, um, you know, when you say mind, body, spirit, it sounds a little trite, like, oh, like yoga or something like that, but it's not, but really uh, the, the perspective that the internal game is equally as important as mm -hmm. the skills and the actions um, this is a really interesting place to start answering questions and like what you just said, sort of like, oh yeah, that's a mindset that I could, yeah. take. but I think, I think for all of us as artists, um, as all of us as artists and then stepping into the entrepreneurial mindset, which everything that's been going on for the last months has only 
focused in. Like it is, yep. it is us and we are in, we yep. are running our businesses that there's these internal shifts that we can, you know, figure out how to break through. Oh, I don't like to, oh, it's like, yeah. So that, that's going to be great to, to open up to questions and explore. Um, yeah. And, and I love also Tom, like there's, there's the initial vision and then there's how do we diversify our portfolio? Yep. Because if you're making a, a bucket of money doing e-learning, then that yep. allows you, I don't know, to create your own cartoon or do whatever you need to do. Yeah. So that's, that's another great perspective. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's, um, if, you, if you're just coming on, um, please fill out the poll and let us know where you're calling from in the chat. And we're going to start uh, getting to some questions. It looks like, um, it looks like Dan and Tom, we have some, you know, some, some good experienced people. Pretty much everyone here awesome. is at, mostly on their journey and then a really good proportion. We've got a, um, a, good, a good blend of people who are, are on the trail, which is this, this is really great for. Because um, I think one, one of the other things to, to notice is like you can, you can start selling your lemonade, but if you don't mm -hmm. have any lemons, it's kind of hard. You have to put it on pre-order or something like that, right? So it, this is an, in, just an interesting discussion. All right. So uh, Crystal. Um, Crystal has a, 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 tech, a tech question. So we'll open it up to Dan first. Um, yeah. Setting yeah. up your home booth in a stu closet recommended covering every single surface um With like, <laughs> like the like the, like, like the office christmas thing like when yeah. Jim yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is actually she's she actually asked two questions here she's mm -hmm. setting up your home booth in a closet do you recommend covering every single surface with soundproofing we'll have to talk about that for a second mm -hmm. for example i'm wondering if my desk needs to be covered and then she goes on, says, I'm struggling to get my sound floor down to minus 60 dB. Do you have any tips that will help with that? Okay, well, question number one. If you're setting up a booth in a closet, do you recommend covering every single service with soundproofing? No, because there's no such thing as soundproofing. Everybody confuses these terms. There is soundproofing, and there is sound diffusion and absorption to prevent reflection within a, a small booth. They are two totally completely different things don't use that terminology or a hand will reach through the <laughs> internet and grab you by the throat and say stop thinking that way stop listening to people on facebook you put soundproofing in there soundproofing is the prevention the prevention of transmission of sound through a wall the only way to do that is with heavy mass your closet does not have heavy mass however if it's an interior closet where there are no external walls that acts as insulation from noise from the outside. Mm -hmm. However, it doesn't stop noise from inside. A furnace, a refrigerator, that family upstairs that's the clogging troop, the, you know, all those things. <laughs> flushing the toilet. Oh, oh man. Toilet oh, flushing. man. All those are in an apartment even worse. You know, air conditioners, air movement, any of those things. A closet will not prevent that. Uh, it will help. If you can close the door behind you, that will reduce your noise floor, which is the second part of your question, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, what you're trying to achieve is with sound blankets. Those are not soundproof blankets. If you stand on one side of those and listen to someone talking on the other side, the sound's going to go right through. They, are, they don't stop sound at all. They can prevent a little bit of infusion from the outside, but not really prevent sound transmission through a wall. What they do do is they create a space that is uh, a lot deader. So there's no reflection. So it doesn't sound like you're in a booth. Uh, that's the problem with small booths is they're very difficult to treat in order to make sure that you don't get base reflex and all these other things. But you have to know what that sounds like. And almost nobody does, mm -hmm. uh, which is why, you know, it, it's good to send your audio to somebody who actually knows this, not some guy who has their own studio. Mm -hmm. Somebody who is a professional knows how it is supposed to sound or as like my acronym whistle, what it's supposed to sound like. Mm -hmm. Very, very basic. Um, so how much do you need to cover? A good deal of it. Mostly people forget that if they, if they have a ceiling above them, it's going to reverberate off that. So you need to have the, the upper part of the closet covered, uh, either the ceiling or a little bit lower. Uh, 
And what you have to do is you have to experiment, record, listen. Does it sound better with the door closed or with the door open? You know, it's a trial and error sort of thing. And in terms of, in terms of like the reflection and stuff, you, could, you can just see what a clap sounds like, right? Well, yeah, you can clap and then you can like count the distance, you know, how long does it take? <laughs> Lightning. <laughs> it's, you know, and it's in, you know, in, in nanoseconds. But, you know. Just the, the quality of the sound. Does it sound completely ringy? Does it sound... Exactly. Well, and then I think I think with flat surfaces like desks or your music stand, um, if, you have a, if you have a metal thing, that is chances are something's going to reflect over it. So if you put a towel or a a piece of carpeting on it, then that is absorptive. It, but you it, don't have to you don't have to bubble wrap everything. Right. right. And to the second part of her question, I don't want to take up too much time here. Is just trying to get her sound floor down to minus sixty. First off, do you know what that means? Uh, and minus 60 is a, a, a benchmark of, of um, level, but it's at minus 60 of low frequency of sound, or is it higher frequency sound? Is it mid-ranged sound? It, it depends. So you've got to find a way to physically do that. Everybody's like, oh, no, I've got this noise reduction program. Forget it. Don't use it mm -hmm. until you know how to use it, when to use it, and, and all that sort of stuff. Because people are totally messing up their audio with this. And uh, it's not a panacea. It is not going to make you read copy. Any and but you were, you were talking about like f making sure that nothing that has a low hum is like a fluorescent light or a refrigerator or... Oh. Find out we have to we have to we have to sniff them down. Find out where they are and turn them off. So find the phys so find the physical sources first. Right. Right. And, right. And um, if that is not the thing, you know, and and what what do you do to get your noise floor down? If you if that doesn't work, consider where you live or where you are set up. Because mm -hmm. you're in the flight path from some airport, not a heck of a lot you can do about that except not be under a flight path from a certain airport. Right. And, it, and I think, yeah. you, isn't there also something about like figuring out if there's something coming from literally the floor? Like there, there could be vibration coming up from... It could be a refrigerator. It could be all sorts of things. But yeah. you have to, you know, it helps to understand how to look for that kind of stuff, which is why it's good to submit to a professional who knows how to analyze the audio like me. Uh, and uh, I can generally say, oh, that's a refrigerator. Mm. Plug your refrigerator. So Just remember to plug it back in. <laughs> Otherwise, everybody's bringing their food over to Tom's house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, um, so, so, Dan, um, can you tell Crystal how to send a specimen cut? Because I think that's absolutely go to, go to my, Yeah, go to my website, homevoiceoverstudio.com, and uh, there is a specimen collection cup at the bottom of the homepage. Click on that. That's a Dropbox. Send me a raw audio, no processing, no editing. And there are instructions specifically on there to, uh, to show you how to do that. And I will give you a thorough analysis, $25. It's, you know, it, it can save your life. Yeah. Um, and then, and then you get the solutions too in one fell swoop. Um, let's see, do you think Bill's room tone is, room tone is kind of, room tone is kind of the same question, right? It, it I, is. It's, it's something that the, the audio book publishers talk about that, you know, if you silence everything, you know, between sentences, you have to have a consistent room tone. Uh, if you have a good studio, your room tone shouldn't be an issue. Uh, so don't, don't futz with that one. Physically find the best way to get a quiet, a quiet space. If you have a quiet space, that solves that problem. Otherwise, it's a little bit more sophisticated than that and, and takes a little bit of instruction and more time than we have. But the idea of a room tone is not that it's quiet in between, it's quiet throughout, right? Right. Or that there's, if there is some sort of tone that is consistent underneath. Right, right, right. That we, we notice. Oh, I didn't even notice that refrigerator home. Yeah. I have, I have a funny story for you guys with, uh, <laughs> with the home booth. <clears throat> and don't, don't be like me, everyone. So I, was, I, le I left my, my booth door open, you know, whatever, to air out. And I came back to record like an hour later or so. So I recorded whatever it was. And then I just hear this sound, like this, this faint, like almost vibrating sound, like under my recording. I'm like, what is that? I'm freaking out. I'm like, is this something break? It was uh, my, my cat fell asleep under my desk and she was purring. <laughs> so I don't recommend letting cats in your, in your booth, but you know, oh my God, that's <laughs> it was, so it was funny. funny. Yeah. The dog was ignored and that, that was, that was always great. <laughs> uh, well, that's, that's hopefully helpful. Um, and uh, Bill has one other de-amplify breaths or remove. 
Uh, it depends. It's not a yes or no question. Um, the best way, if it's a long format thing, you don't want people thinking that you don't breathe, that you're a robot. Uh, your breaths have to be there. One, one tip is if it, they're loud breaths, if they're, they disrupt the flow of what it is you're saying, yeah, you got to edit those out. Just don't block them, you know, butt end them to each other. Uh, but one thing you can do is highlight it and take it down 15 dB. And that makes it sound a lot more. A, li a little littler. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's one solution to that. But that's part of an entire instructional thing. We're not here to give people the college course on how to do all this stuff. Yeah. This, but, but it's good, it's good to, like, to have the questions asked. And then how do you start thinking about it is, is also, right. what, you know, that's, that's all we're here to do at the dojo. Like, this is, how, this, is what it, this is what it looks like. Here's how you can think about it. Uh, and we'll, we'll figure it out together. How to do it um good 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 um jason asked a question about um the knowing the kind of work that you'd like to pursue which is great that's the first rule of the dojo know what you want ask for it people will give it to you if you allow so that's great how to get union auditions without having a rep right now um i think what we'll do jason is open this up um and let, let's open it up so so this opens up the whole discussion of union, non-union, and FICOR. You're talking about how do you, when you're union, get opportunities. I think as Tom, as we open up to e-learning and yeah. um, self-marketing, um, direct marketing, um, I think the key here is understanding that there are big chunks of work that you can, as a union member, convert to union rates yeah. that then become part of your um, pension and health and, um, and investment and stuff like that. So it's understanding which parts of the game are applicable. Yeah. And um, I'll be talking about something that's coming up at the end of the month that uh, we're doing a prototype about, uh, but we're gonna be talking about that in depth. So I'll, I'll share that at the end. So I think let's, keep, let's open up Jason's question like that. And then as we're, as we're answering e-learning and direct marketing calls, let's kind of fit in like how that works. Um, anything else to add to that, Tom? Or? Uh, no, I think that's, you know, we'll, we'll kind of touch upon that as we go. Um, I will say in terms of like, like the cold marketing aspect, at least, in my experience from like the clients that I'm reaching out to, a lot of it is non-union. Um, but the trick is like Tish said, to know what you can convert. And the good thing about marketing is that a lot of the stuff that you're going to get usually um, is going to be like your narration and your e-learning things that are easier to convert. Um, so going, like going into, or right, right, right. You know, going into it, um, you know, you may not see a lot of union work up front, but you can definitely look to convert a good amount of it. Um, as long as you know what to do and everything like that. Yeah. Good, good, good. Um, and Kia's question kind of ties in to know what you want and ask for it. Um, so Kia's doing the, you should do voiceover intensive right now as a lifelong Nintendo fan. It's easy to say working for them would be a dream opportunity. What kind of experience do you think is needed before working for Nintendo? Um, Tom, you, you want to take first shot at this? Yeah, sure. So you're going to, you'll hear like a lot of um, a similar type answer in terms of like, you know, how to do this and how to do that. Um, to be honest with you, the kind of experience, so this is a little twofold, the kind of experience that you need, um, it's as easy as just being confident and being happy with and having a good demo. Because when you reach out to a client, um, usually they, they're not overly concerned with your resume, with your resume and uh, what you've done. You know, if it's like more of a specialized thing, um, you know, longer form like audiobooks or, or, or e-learning and stuff, they might, you know, ask if you have experience in that just because, you know, there's a certain process to it and, you know, the stamina and everything like that. Um, but, but, as far as just like the experience that you need, you just need a, you need a good demo, one that you're, you're, you're confident with. Um, because when you reach out to them, that's what they're going to hear. And then that's what they're going to base their decisions on in terms of if they want to send you an audition or, you know, just have you, you know, do a job right then and there or, you know, down the line, do a job. Um, it's, it's like I said, it, it's really as easy as that. Some companies like the bigger companies, I actually know Nintendo, Nintendo is, is one of them because I've, I've worked with them before. They hire mainly through agents um however which you know we can kind of get into later there's a whole slew of work out there 
internal work that agents will never see that you'll never see on the pay to play the pay to play like like IBM is one of my clients and I do a lot of their narration internal narration and stuff that's it's never going to be seen on an agent's desk because maybe it's not you know lucrative enough for them or it's just got a quick turnaround it's not doesn't make sense for this company to reach out to um, an agent or put it on the pay to play so in terms, if you're asking for like commercials and stuff I'd say mainly on the agent side but you never know what internal work they're going to have you do. So it's as easy as just mar marketing to them, which we can get into later and, and just asking if they keep a roster of voiceover talent, you'd be very surprised at how many large companies do so. And if they don't hire outside of agencies, then that's fine. At least, you know, you know, you know, you know what to do next to achieve that, that goal. Right. And then, and then again, having the lemons to run your lemonade. Yep. Do you have a demo to share? Do you have yep. a place where they can hear your work? Et cetera, et cetera. I think knowing a company of having a dream company, it's it's not necessarily stalking, but um, but it's okay to have a dream yes. and then find out and get informed and who can I meet or where could I meet people from Nintendo or, yep. or oh like just just what Tom what Tom opened up like oh right external internal huh yep. what else do they what else is needed because there's no they there's only we right. right. So basically what you're asking here is how can I be part of your team Nintendo, yep. in whatever context? And I also think that if you do know and love something, then you're going to be able to talk to somebody at Nintendo about Nintendo, about what you know and love yep. and da -da 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 do. That's going to be like, Hey, this guy knows and loves us. Wait, yep. let's, one of us, let's do this. So I think those are all, those are all. Yeah. And, you know, that comes from a good place of authenticity, like Tish was saying, you know, I mean, that's the main spec that we're seeing on every casting right now is authentic and genuine and natural and everything like that. So if you truly put it out there, you know, into, into your email or however you're going to reach out to them that you really do like this company because it is genuine, it's going to come across as genuine and it's going to make them that much more likely to you know, add you to their roster or at least re at the very least just respond to let you know, like, you know, what direction you need to go in. Um, but but yeah, your your love for your, your love for Nintendo uh, and your demos is enough. I will say, don't ever make sure you have a website that houses your demos. You don't ever send an attachment of your demos unless they ask you to, hmm. because cybersecurity is like the main thing nowadays. You know, attachments are the main way for viruses, to, or one of the main ways for viruses to get sent. A lot of companies will either could could quarantine will actually quarantine your email, and it'll never get to the recipient if it's an attachment from an external mm -hmm. sender, or if it does get to the recipient, they may be instructed by their company to delete any emails and report them. So you always send a link. Um, that's a big way to kind of get yourself counted out before you even start. Cool. And that, that also sounds like a real foundational principle for any direct marketing. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Unless they specifically tell you, always send a link. Always. Yeah. Cool. 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 Let's, let's keep on going. There's lots of, Ooh, lots of good questions. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, la 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 la. Let's see, Jarrell, um, you have kind of an origin story question. Um, Jarrell's awesome. He's doing, you should do voiceover intensive that has a lot of opera singers in it right now. Um, uh, do, 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 coming from live performance, what are your greatest strengths and how did it help you as voiceover artists when you first started out? Yeah. Well, this is, this is great because hearing everybody's origin story is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Dan, let's let's hear yours because you have such a you have such a cool multifaceted like the things that you bring together to this is is really uh, I love I love your I love your origin story, Dan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, well, it started with a giant turtle. And, uh, <laughs> um, there is a turtle story in there, but I won't. <laughs> um, no, I I came out of broadcasting. Uh, I spent most of the uh, the eighties and early nineties in broadcasting and uh, and some of the eighties too or some of the seventies too uh, but um, I was a production director, I made commercials, did it for years and years and years, made thousands of commercials uh, then uh, radio and I parted ways uh, <laughs> I uh, sold life insurance for a while with an uncle who thought I would be a great life insurance salesman, and you know I said, Uncle Len no. <laughs> uh, and then I went back to school, got my teaching degree. I taught high school social studies for a few years, got my master's degree in social studies, education and creative studies. And when I left education in 2001, found the online uh, world of voiceover. Yes, that long ago. <laughs> 
And yeah. I've been doing it ever since. And, uh, you know, in the early days, in the early days of pay to plays and not everybody doing this, it was a lot easier to find work. Now with, uh, as, as uh, Maurice Tobias likes to say, a million people looking for voice work every day around the world, the competition's a little stiff. Uh, so it's not as easy to do. And I've been, in the, and of course, in the last six months, I've been very, very busy uh, uh, because everybody has to have a home studio because they can't go in the studio. So I've been very busy helping people with their home studios. But I've been professionally consulting on home studios for the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've heard it all. I've seen more home studios, heard more home studios than anybody else on the planet. <laughs> you know, everybody, the <laughs> right, except for our other handful of people who I can name. Uh, most people uh, who you read uh, advice from are experts, the tremendous, complete experts in one studio of their own. Every voice is different. Every room is different. There is no one size fits all. And suggestions are a recipe for disaster. Yeah. <laughs> so, so see the blend, the blend of all these things that Dan and I, what I love about that is that uh, 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 you could say like, oh, insurance salesman, that's like, has nothing to do with, it has everything oh, to do with voice. Okay. I, learned, I learned how to break telephones. <laughs> you, you, need, you need persistence. You need to, to understand and listen and, and get people, you know, be compassionate with people and get to hear their story, et cetera. You know, there's so many layers. So how about you, Tom? You, you kind of told us a little bit about your journey. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I come from also like, you know, a corporate back background, like the, you know, nine to five world and everything. And I never, th and, and until I started marketing, I never realized like how, how much it actually helped my voiceover business because I'm, I'm very analytical. Um, and I learned like a lot of great, you know, workflow automation skills at my day, you know, at my, my nine to five. Um, so being able to like bring those Excel skills and kind of, you know, build my, you know, before the days of my uh, CRM, you know, build kind of like a, a template and a spreadsheet to know who I had to reach out to when I had to reach out to them, you know, cause it's, it's quick. You, you want to fire off, you know, a lot of marketing emails and everything. So to have that automation there really just helped immensely. Um, and, 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 you know, I'm very opportunistic in, in the sense that, you know, I, I will literally, like I had a phone call with, uh, with my mortgage company the other day and I'm, and I was thinking about how, how to market to them and who would be best <laughs> to market to them. So, so I think being opportunistic really is my, my strong suit that really helped my voiceover business. Um, because everything, you know, it's what I tell my students also, everything is an opportunity. Um, yeah. I don't care if it's Disney or the deli down the street, you can reach out to them. You can, you can speak to somebody there um, and, and really having that go get it attitude to get the work to come to you. Not as many people are doing it as you think. So you really yeah. will stand apart. That's really cool. Like just in how you switched the energy, because usually, usually when we hear opportunity, well, oh, isn't Tom opportunity? <laughs> Tom, like looking out for himself <laughs> and out to screw people over. But what you really brought to light is the heart of the word opportunistic is opportunity. Yeah. And to approach this like everywhere is an opportunity. The other thing I think that's really powerful about your origin story, Tom, is that you have really leveraged um, you've leveraged having your nine to five job as something yep. that is still, you know, uh, is, is a, for a long time supported you yeah. and you've used it to segue. So, you know, you know how the corporate world works, you know, who the yep. people are, you know, who the players are in general, yep. in terms of structure. And then you probably have a great network of people from whatever you're doing specifically. So there's yeah. that layer. And then you're not, you're not putting pressure on your emerging on your on your nascent um voiceover to support you completely you yep. you let it you let the leverage of the thing that you are doing build let you have that and build from there and you also work your ass off right because you, <laughs> you've yes. done your whole job and then your other job on top of that as yes well. and now i'm coaching so, and stuff so it's fun <laughs> i don't sleep anymore that's the key to uh and um yeah yes and a baby coming so now i'm really not going to sleep um yeah you know and that's the thing it's it's just it's 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 hard work and and you know being in the corporate world just helped so much because i knew the things that resonated with me i knew the things that didn't resonate with me i knew the times of the day that i were best to contact somebody you know because of based on how i reacted and and you know we people are very similar to each other. I mean, I really believe that, you know, in certain, certain aspects and 
if, if there's something that works for you and doesn't work for, or doesn't work for you, other people are probably feeling that way as well. So that's something that you can incorporate into your business. Because I say to everybody, every single casting is a problem and you are the solution that you're going to work with the, 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 the client. Um, so to, to know those pain points, you know, from like the corporate perspective, you can really, 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 that's very beneficial for your voiceover world. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. And then also I think sometimes, um, either sometimes we uh, come from a fully, um, fully creative background, yep. uh, like Jarrell, um, which is more my origin story, which I'll talk about in just a sure. second, really briefly. But sometimes, you know, the things, the things that are the things are like, I never want to do this again, are like, w we, we learn, we have that and we learn so much that like, so figure out what is positive about yeah. that place that you may never want to see. Absolutely, you. absolutely, because um, there's definitely and, something to be learned, yeah. And activate it, yeah. yeah. And then like my origin story is, um, I don't think I've ever had like a real people job. Um, so so that was, you know, I, I studied theater at Northwestern. Um, I secretly studied opera uh, adjacent <laughs> to that. So I had this opera and theater thing. Um, did you know I, I i come from chicago so i did i worked at second city um both on the team and uh taking classes i did shakespeare um i had the opera background um what else did i do like so a really like classically trained person and did all the things that you were supposed to do as a classically trained i worked in a jazz bar um i did mm. spoken word interstitial things between the sets so like learned all of that sort of thing and then um i got my break because um my husband's uh, friend was a creative director and said hey do you want to do this um do you want to do this spot um i was like yeah sure and then i left going that <laughs> like everything else out of the way because all of this other stuff that I had done um, aligned like click, 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 click. And it totally made sense. And I got paid and I was uh, 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 able to join the union and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> so it, it focused in pretty clearly. Um, so, um, but I have to say, all of the years and money that I spent so much money on my upper training, often I'd be like, what am I doing here, David? Here's another 300 thoughts, like over and over and over like a crack addict. Um, it, it, it became, it, I did not go the opera route, but I did have all of that foundation yep. and, and it, all, it all applies. So. so those are origin stories. And then I think the fun thing, we can wrap this up and get some more questions. Um, you're making your origin story right now. Yep. Like wherever you are in your journey, it's your origin story. So just keep on thinking about that. Like, oh, where did I start? I started here in this little humble log cabin. Um, but, you know, so, so hopefully that's helpful. Um, and uh, if, you, if you are only creative, fantastic. Then let's learn this business end. Let's learn this entrepreneurial yep. end and get it down because that's really your job. <laughs> if, you come, if, if you come from only only like a, a, a business or corporate or doing something else, great, then activate your creative and let this be the joyous thing. And then um, a, a lot of people who work at the dojo too have been disconnected from their creativity. You know, so how do you use this as a way to come back to, to that part of you? So um, awesome, oh my God, so much, so many questions, so many people, so many time. Um, okay, uh, marketing question uh, from Laura. Which do you think is more effective? Customized, personalized emails uh, sent individually to leads or using a vetted service with legal, legal buy-in from recipients that does a mass mailing on behalf of talent? Perhaps email takes a lot of time. Mass email reaches many more quickly, but is more expensive. Cool. Okay. So this is, this is like kind of like the, the hot, one of the hot topics in marketing. You know, should I make it super personal? Should I not? Um, I'm going to give you an answer that's kind of in the middle, but I'll explain it. Um, in terms of like having a service that mass mails for you, I wouldn't do that. Like if you're talking about a CRM, that's fine. But if like they, if this service is going to like send out, like here's the clients, you send out the emails on my behalf, I wouldn't do that because you kind of lose your your brand in a sense, your branding, your 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 you kind of lose your voice in the email because no you know nobody's going to be a better you than you, and you def, you want to come across in in your in your marketing 
just like you want to come across in, in your uh, in your auditions. It's the same. It, 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 they're one in the same. In terms of personalizing the emails, here's my big thing. I wholeheartedly believe that you should absolutely personalize your emails if, here's the big if, you truly have something genuine to say. Um, and what I mean by that is if, I'll give an example. I had a sound studio. I think I did an audition for them. Um, you know, whatever it was. Uh, and then I, I was on their mailing list and they reached out to me and they said that, uh, you know, they, or they, re they reached out to everyone on the list and they redid their website. So I checked it out. I actually really liked their website. Um, I got some tips from their website for my own website. <coughs> and, and um, you know, and I realized, and I realized they weren't on my, you know, I realized that I had never marketed to them. So I did. And I wrote out a very personal email explaining that I love their website, you know, how I used it to build mine up. Um, and then I got into my marketing verbiage and stuff. And it came across as genuine because it was genuine. Um, I know that there are a lot of people and I mean, I get sales emails too. Well, people will try to relate to me in every single way. And, and maybe this is just like the millennial in me that's always on the go. But it's like, I know why you're emailing me. You know, I, I respect it more if somebody gets right to the point, you know, professionally and with following their branding and being kind about it. But I'd rather, I'd rather somebody just ask me what they want to ask me up front as opposed to finding this, this way to relate to me and everything like that. So if you do have something personal to say to me, then, then say it because it'll come across like that. But if you don't, don't think that you absolutely need to find, you know, the, every single thing for every single client. Um, that you're going to email, you're going to market to because there are tons of clients out there. Um, it's not worth your time to spend hours and hours and hours on one um, just because, you know, the more, the more lines you throw in the water, the better your chances of, of catching a fish. So that's what I believe. I know that there are some people who absolutely believe in personalizing your, your, um, the email um, and that's fine. What works for others may not work for me and vice versa. I will say, and the thing that I'm trying out right now is I'm actually incorporating um, video into my um, emails and my LinkedIn messaging and marketing and stuff. So to, to me, that adds almost a way that almost adds a sense of personalization because you're saying somebody's name, um, you know, you're, you're you and, and, and there's nobody else like you so that you already stand out through your demos, through the video. So long story short is don't, don't worry about trying to find something for every single client. If you can't, um, you know, it'll, it'll come across as salesy if you just try to find anything. I, I love what you said earlier, Tom, about like, how do you like to be, like if someone, if someone went, hi, Tom, I'm Tish Hicks, I do this, yeah. and hi, um, I notice you have yeah. a dog, I have a dog too, <gasps> um, then you're like, ew, uh, but, I, but yeah. if, if there's something like, hey, Tom, thank, you know, thanks for that thing, um, that yeah. was cool, see ya, you know, then you're like, oh, who's that? Person, right but just like like the golden rule of yes market unto others as you would like to be marketed and and I'm, I'm glad that you said that you know with the c at the end i approach all of my my, my marketing from a servant mentality not a sales mentality mm -hmm. because i mean listen i'm busy i'm always on the go i i don't want to be feel pressured into buying something on the spot you know if somebody if i'm a client and somebody reaches out to me and says hey i'm a voice talent was wondering if you were hiring you know um you have any project that would be right for me I, I don't know you from a hole in the wall, but it's like, if you approach it from the sense that like I do that, you know, Hey, here's my demos wondering if you keep a roster, um, you know, here to help whenever you need, I'm going to take a step back. I'll check in on you every so often. Um, you know, but I'm here whenever you need, it kind of keeps the ball in their court and it lets them know that they don't really have to drop everything in order to respond to you. Um, but, but absolutely what Tish said, you know what you like and chances are other people are going to feel the same way. Um, you know, and another thing like with that, I, I can't stand, I can't stand the subject line, quick question. Uh, I never use quick question in the subject line because, oh, because whenever I get a sales email and someone says quick question, it's never a quick question ever. <laughs> so it's like, to me, I'm already like, I already judge it too quickly and I, I'm more likely to delete it. Um, so subject lines, find something that works for you. You can even have your uniqueness in the subject line. There's different ways to do it without having to find, you know, something under the sun to relate, you know, relate to them with. Yeah. Yeah. What do we switch? What do we switch up and, and grab a couple of tech questions yeah. and then maybe Tom come back. There, it seems like there's a lot of e-learning in general questions. Sure. So maybe what we could do is just do like a little, little sample of 
e-learning is the subject how would you market to that and that might answer a lot of questions and then guys we're we going to be talking about another thing that's coming up at the end of the month that tom's going to be doing in-depth work with people so um I'll, I'll let you know about that um stay tuned uh <laughs> so let's see uh let's grab a couple of these did you see some um yeah there's a there's a couple that that caught your ear caught your eye yeah there's one here from sequina dubose mm -hmm. uh, what would you say are the must-have technology elements for the startup home studio what kind of budget should someone just starting out expect to set aside for studio technology and a setup that can garner work uh mm -hmm. let me preface that by saying there's no technology out there that's going to get you voice work it's all what goes on between your ears and what comes out of your mouth uh, it is far more important that you be a qualified voice actor that can, can read copy and interpret copy well. That said, recording uh, in, in a home studio is actually relatively easy. Again, don't pay attention to all the stuff that goes on on Facebook where, oh, you got to use RX-7. Oh, you got to use this. Oh, you gotta, you've got to have a manly microphone and you've got to have a, a great <laughs> preamp and all this stuff. It's all hooey. <laughs> There are three elements to a good home studio. You need to have a quiet space that is non-reflective, which is why a closet is great, especially a closet full of clothes. You need to not learn how to use a microphone properly, Tom. Uh, it should always be, I mean, it's, I mean it's, it's, it's my way of doing it. It should be upside down. It should be at eye level. You need to talk down so it gives you room to gesticulate. And as you can hear, I sound like I'm in the same room with you. It's just, the you know, and you don't get plosives this way. Uh, and you don't have this big black uh, circle in front of you that reminds you that you're on a microphone and therefore projecting a little bit more. Uh, so that's, that's important. And then learning how to set proper levels. All you need a good microphone. You don't need a crappy microphone. A lot of people say, oh, use an AT2020, a little cheap. Spend $150, $200 on a good studio condenser mic, and they're all over the place. They are like, it's like trying to choose the right gum when you're in the, the checkout line at the supermarket. It's just, there's just so much of it there. Mm -hmm. The Audio Technica 2035, 4040, good microphones. Uh, you know, you can spend $1,000, but again, that's not going to change the way you read copy. Mm -hmm. And the better the microphone you have, the more it's going to reveal any flaws in your particular uh, recording space. So don't go hog wild on that. $150, $200 on a studio condenser mic, not a, not a, uh, a, uh, a dynamic mic like an RE20 or uh, the SM7B. Oh, great for voiceover. Yeah, if you're on the radio live. Mm -hmm. But no, it's uh, get a studio condenser microphone. Audio-Technica, AKG, uh, you know, even, you know, the MXL mark, you know, mics are good. A Rode NT1A and NT, you know, the NTG, uh, the Rode mics are very good. Uh, but there are a lot of different manufacturers out there. $150 for that. Uh, an interface. Do not buy an Apollo twin, especially if you have no idea what it is the Apollo twin does, which is it is sets up a situation for recording music. It's got nothing to do with voiceover. Do not buy things for all these fabulous features that will take you 20 years to understand and learn. You don't need to learn those. And, take, to taking, and taking it way down, down the interface is what connects the microphone to your computer. To computer. Right. It's yeah. what takes the analog signal of your microphone and turns it into the ones and zeros or plus and minuses that your computer can understand and turn into the graphic representation of a waveform and other things that you can manipulate. Uh, a good interface, a Scarlett 2i2 or a Solo from Focusrite. Very simple. They work great. Uh, the, the, the Steinbergs and the Yamahas uh, also work great. You don't have to spend a fortune on those. You can get a, a Focusrite Solo third generation for $110. Mm -hmm. uh, you need a boom microphone stand so you can hang your microphone properly, Tom. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I'm going to keep after you. That's though. fine. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, you know, you can use a reticulated arm or you can use a boom stand. As long as you create the situation where you've got this microphone essentially at eye level with your copy down here, uh, 25, 30 bucks at Guitar Center for, or Sweetwater, you know, for a, a good, uh, boom microphone stand. And then it's a matter of the environment in which you're in. And if you've got a closet, well, I just saved you $6,000. <laughs> You know, otherwise, booths are not, you don't, 
here, here's the thing I can say, and then we can move on here. Mm -hmm. You don't buy great equipment to get work. You work to get great equipment. Uh, don't invest in all this expensive stuff thinking that you're going to make a million dollars doing voiceover, make the million dollars first. And if you're doing it with, with, you know, not million dollars worth of equipment, then perhaps you'll go, Oh, do I really need a million dollars worth of equipment? Yeah. Uh, you know, there, I have some friends that have a podcast and they have this, this feature called, uh, you know, questionable technology purchase of the week. Uh, I mean, they, it's not the technology that gets you work. Don't pay it. You know, it's like, Oh, you gotta have this. You gotta have that. Don't pay attention. Keep it simple, and you know, and 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 if it sounds good, it is good. Yeah, I think I think this lemonade thing is really you have to have lemons, you have to have sugar, and then I'm trying to think metaphorically. Um, in some ways, the microphone in your setup is um, like the juicer. Like you can do it by hand. It's but but also it's like you can serve you can serve lemonade in a Dixie cup. So you probably don't want to do that, but you don't necessarily need to have crystal glasses mm -hmm. to serve the lemonade either. So you probably want somewhere in between that. And then just to also clarify, um, so, so first of all, anyone who just went, ha ha ha, Dan said all these technical words, I'm gonna have a heart no, attack. I, didn't. I said, I took all the technical words No, out. you didn't, you didn't. <laughs> but, but, but see, it's easy for you, but there's still people that might be like, whoa, that was a lot of stuff. No, the, the great thing about Dan is that he does keep it simple. So he does keep a thing, but trust that it's, it's a simple thing. You get these basic things down and then you get your first setup and then you can expand and see how that works. Now, it's, one thing it's that, not the equipment itself, it's how you use it. More exactly, than it's the lemons, it's the quality of your lemons. Um, you're trying to say um, that before. And, and um, also one other thing, you know, uh, Dan's suggesting starting with a, a good condenser mic and an interface. And I think in the landscape now, you know, previously, previously we were able to think of this evolution of technology as like, first you just gotta practice. Hey, look, I can practice. Um, then you need to have audition quality, right? And I think one of the other things that Dan says all the time is it doesn't need to sound good. It needs to, it needs to sound not bad, right? It needs to sound like you and not bad. So there's a, in an audition quality thing, it's does it sound like you and is there nothing else that's distracting, right? And now because the way things are going with the pandemic and the shutdowns, having being ready to roll from the beginning with something that you could get a job and do something is a little cut to the chase so previously we might have said you know get a usb mic and and take it from there that's audition quality but i think that there's there's way things that are shifting quickly that getting a good um moderately priced package of of what dan was just suggesting is the way to think about it and, and the other thing that you always say, Dan, is like, use what you got. What do you got? How if about it, that? And if it works, nobody <laughs> how the sausage is made. <laughs> if, it, if it sounds good, it is good. And you may have stuff that's, you know, you don't want to buy cheap, but you don't need to buy expensive. Yeah. And uh, there's lots mm -hmm. of things out there. But the thing is, is I can suggest this mic or that mic. The mic you have is the mic you have, and it's the sound you have. There are... Despite what people will say, I don't think there's any mics out there that favor somebody's voice over somebody else's. It's never going to be the difference between you getting a gig and not getting a gig. It's if you happen to be talking into the mic like this that may prevent you from getting a gig. <laughs> don't do that. Just the moment I go like, oh, oh. <laughs> it's like you ever walk in and see see some some talent like, let me just move this microphone. Everyone goes, oh, yeah. and, 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 and to quickly answer <laughs> another question here from Catherine uh, Lisak about uh, tech question, uh, clips of various genres of audio. But anyway, she's talking about processing. If you want to learn processing, spend 20 years in a recording studio. It's not your job. Don't worry about it. Don't start thinking, I've got to have this process. I got to have this process. I got to clean up my audio. Do everything you can physically and then stick to the parameters that you are given by the publisher for audiobooks. Uh, you don't want to, there's no secret sauce. There's a way to do it that they want you to do it and pay attention to those. If you need instruction on that, that's something we can help you with. And, and as, as my dad, who's an amazing architect in Chicago, says, when the client's happy, our work is done, right? Like, okay, so you don't have to overdo, yeah. 
Good, good, good. And I think I think I'll, we'll, we'll, maybe we'll wrap up the tech part. And of course, you know, Dan's here um, to to answer questions. Uh, you know, contact him. He's a he's a great resource. Um, Oh shoot, I was going to wrap up with something really powerful. Oh, um, understanding that the tech is part of our lemonade stand. We all need to have the foundations and the understanding and the comfort and have it part of our, I love this idea of workflow that Tom's talking about. We have a technical workflow and we have to understand that we are the engineer at one moment, we are the editor at one moment. It's all part of our job now. Um, but just to keep it in perspective to where it fits in your workflow. And if you love this stuff, go for it. But it's not about the stuff. Like that you're an excellent tech person can... Nobody cares. Well, it, it, can, it can be helpful if you have that insight, but it really isn't what it is about. It's about getting her done, knowing what to hmm. do, knowing, knowing what the foundations are, um, continuing to tune in to what is quality and getting comfortable in your workflow and um, then taking it from yep. there. But it's, yeah. Okay. Tom. Yes. Let's grab some, let's, let's, let's do a little um, Not a marketing montage. question. <laughs> montage. And, uh, you know, once again, we don't need to answer the whole thing, but just there, it seems like there's questions about e-learning. And yep. then, um, so what if, what if we did do like, Hey, Tom, I have, uh, so first of all, what, what do we need to get into e-learning? Sure. Um, and, so, and then how, like maybe a, a little marketing, a little e-learning marketing primer. Um, sure. Yeah. So uh, e-learning, well, the first thing I'll say before we even get to the marketing is make sure that you like the work. Um, you know, there, there's been, there's been a lot of genres that I thought that I really wanted to do. And then like, I, I practiced it and maybe, you know, book some jobs from like pay to plays on it. And I'm like, I don't like to do this at all. So, um, so, so make sure you like the work, um, you know, that comes with practicing, find scripts that you like, and just see if you like to do it, really pretend like you're actually doing the work. And then after that, um, I wouldn't get an, like, for example, I'll take e-learning, for example. Um, I wouldn't get an e-learning demo right away. Reason being is, is, um, Demos are expensive. I mean, you, you know, we all know that um, it's, it's one of the biggest costs for voiceover. Um, you're, I, I booked a lot of e-learning work and narration work from my commercial demo because that's like your bread and butter. That's your natural voice. That shows your range, you know, hopefully. Um, Tish, Ryan, and Brittany, that's where I got my commercial demo from. Um, you know, so, so, so you know, see, see, if, see if that's work that, you, that, that, you know, that really resonates with you that, that you, that you book a lot of companies are really hiring you for e-learning and then you can kind of get into your e-learning demos if that's what you want to do. That's what I did recently. I made an e-learning demo recently because I was doing it a lot. Um, but you can absolutely do it with your commercial demo once you know that you like the work. And then after that, it really just goes beyond, it goes up to know the companies that are hiring for e-learning, know the, know the job titles that are hiring for e-learning that you can reach out to um, you know, find people on LinkedIn. That's the, your best resource is LinkedIn. Um, I'll give you a tip, free tip at, at e-learning companies. Um, a common title for voice buyers is instructional designer. So you will want to look for instructional designers on LinkedIn, um, you know, and, and, and reach out to them, whether it's through email or LinkedIn or both. Um, but know the companies that are doing it. You can find it just from an easy Google search. There are tons of lists out there. Uh, look at conferences. Even if you don't attend the conference, look at the companies that are speaking at these conferences. If it's an e-learning conference and they have e-learning people speaking, chances are that those are people who are going to hire for e-learning. Uh, and, and then know the job titles and then make, make it a point to market to those people in those job titles because they're the most likely to hire for voice talent. And if they don't, then hopefully they'll pass your, your demo off to somebody who does. And then you kind of build your list from there. It's a trial and error type thing. It really is. You know what? You know, it just comes up for me. Um, my 13 year old has been playing Grand Theft Auto on, on the <laughs> break, but he's always like, mom, mom, we're in the middle of a heist. My mom, we, we, I, I can't, I can't do that. I'm in the middle of a heist. But again, like switching this opportunistic to a negative thing. But I think one of the joys about thinking about marketing is like, ooh, here's some place I want to get yes. into. Hmm. How would I get into it? Well, here's a window. It's the best. Here's a door. Here's a thing. What if we went to the back door and said I was bringing bakery goods? Um, well, that could work. Like, but how does, you know, how, if you think about that, like R2D2, plug into the Death Star, what are the plans? How are we going to get to that? Then it becomes fun. And then the yes. marketing becomes like a creative puzzle. And then you're like, ooh, that, oh, that opened up. <gasps> if I know all the instructional designers, then they know the hoobie boobies and yep. we can get, 
And then I know all the hoobie boobies and the hoobie boobies are like, the, 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 oh, good. Then it becomes fun and you're in the drivers. Yep. That's why I love marketing so much. Like, yes, you can't force somebody to respond to you or like your work. So they put you on their <laughs> roster or whatever, but you, the, 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 the opportunities are limitless. You know, like going back to Nintendo, you may not have to wait for an audition to come to you from Nintendo. You can reach out to them. Um, it's, you know, IBM, I'm gonna go back to IBM again, just to give you an example of how powerful marketing is. The producer there said that he only hires talent in two ways. One from referred by other talent, other talent, which by the way, is the best thing you can do. They're not fellow talents, not your competition. They're your, your colleagues, your coworkers. Uh, or the other way that he hires talent is from people who cold contact him. And that's a fortune 500 company. So, so, so the, 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 the possibilities are limitless. And like Tish was saying, it's fun. Like I, 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 I like to nerd out about marketing. Like I wake up early and I get my coffee and I, I market to companies and, and it's just, it's like sacred to me almost. It's so much so that, uh, you know, but when I, when, when like auditions and bookings come in, I'm like, Oh, I didn't get a chance to market today. And my wife's like, what is wrong with you? Like, doesn't everybody want the auditions and the bookings? I'm like, yeah, but I didn't get you. I didn't get a chance to market. So it is, it, it, it's, it's total control of your, of your business is what it is. And if you, if you think also like, um, sorry, I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm borderline autistic with, I no, have, no, no. <laughs> I have to talk in pictures. I only talk in pictures guys. But the thing that comes, that comes up for that is Tom is really an expert in soil maintenance and soil, like create the soil and know how to work the land and then you can grow whatever you want. Right. That's mm -hmm. a quote. If you think of marketing like that, Oh, I can take any patch of land. I know what to do to work what we need into it. And then we'll see what grows. We'll see what Absolutely. grows. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, different companies work in different ways, just like different plants, you know, need mm -hmm. different, you know, care. So you, right, you'll right, start right. to learn, you know, the different indus industries, who, who hires, you know, talent in what this industry, that industry. Um, and it really is, it's just... It's, it's just, a, it's just a, a process that just builds on itself. And, and there's just also, so much to go into it. It also ties in with what you're talking about, the authenticity, right? Yeah. Because what you're talking about is organic farming. Because you could buy a big pile of chemical-laden fertilizer and go, I'm sending this, right? But yep. it, it, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Oh, I'm lost in metaphor land. Um, okay. So here we are, guys. Um, we... Um, <laughs> one of the, one of the, uh, the great mottos that we have around the dojo these days in particular is, um, hold for street cleaner. Hold on. <laughs> um, that is external noise, um, <laughs> um, is ha -ha, our plan for good is working. So, um, every time that we have these, um, ask the senseis, it's testament to our plan for good is working. So, um, we covered a lot of territory and answered a lot of questions. And hopefully, hopefully what this becomes a resource for once again is how to think about what questions to ask and then how to crack them open and how to start creating frameworks. It's not like, ah, I have the answer to everything because I was on an hour long call with Tom Aglio. Aha. It doesn't <laughs> work like that. You ask the questions to start, how, how are you thinking about things? And then that lets you ask other questions. So that being said, we have a ton of questions that didn't quite get answered. So usually what we do here, um, if, if Tom and Dan and I have a few minutes after, what we'll do is we'll wrap up, give you, make sure you know how to contact everybody, let know what's coming up next. And then um, we'll go mute and video off. So it will be like we're not here, but if you have time, Tom, if you have time, Dan, yeah. and um, can type in some questions there, um, you guys can hang out and see what, what, what's happening in that. If you have other questions, um, um, you can always get 15 minutes of time uh, with, with the dojo, with either me or Diana. Um, Dan, I know you um, have ways that people can, can touch base with you. Um, uh, there we go. <laughs> the, that, that's the thing. Um, and then um, one of the things that um, haven't been officially, officially saying that we're doing this, but I'm recognizing that it might be a really good place and time to say this. Um, so as I was saying at the beginning, the dojo has the developmental, our, our developmental division, which is 
this, ask the sensei, you should do voiceover and our 14 month full training program called From Mystery to Mastery. Um, and then we have our working pro division, which is called the nth degree. You finish your black belt uh, in the Mystery to Mastery program, and then you go on to nth degree black belt. So it's as you're stepping into working pro, as you're continuing on as working pro. And then we have our VO Dojo Pro Fight Club. So um, the thing that's coming up at the end of the month is the prototype of what we're calling the nth degree intensive. Um, right now, we're mostly opening it up to people who are within the Mystery to Mastery program. But if you are interested in what the nth degree intensive is going to be, it's a weekend intensive, um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And we're going to lay out all of these places that you need to have in place to uh, be launching your business. Um, and the things that you need to think about. Tom's going to be speaking, Dan's going to be speaking or sharing. I'm not even speaking because we're not talking at you. We're, um, we're sharing with you and it's going to be a, a limited amount of people and what we want everyone to do is leave with an action plan. So think of it, it's kind of like a conference, but with a certain amount of people and you leave with an actual plan. This is the vision for the nth degree. So if you are at a place where you have your lemonade stand, you know you have lemons, you have sugar, you have water, you have cups, you have, you know, you have, you have something to sell. Um, that would be the criteria um, that we're looking for um, in terms of who, who we would be accepting. So if you're interested in that, contact uh, me, tish at theviodojo.com and say nth degree intensive because we'll see who's interested and see how we can add. But Tom's going to be there and sharing about marketing and, and direct, um, direct marketing and stuff like that. So that's, that's happening. Um, and uh, Dan, you just said how people can get in touch with you, right? On voiceoverstudio.com and uh, submit your audio and uh, I'll be happy to give it a good analysis and uh, answer your questions. And then we, if we need to, we can set up more of a full consult. Yeah, and, and Dan can work with anyone anywhere to get your space set up properly. And I have. Yeah, and Tom, in addition to nth degree, how, how else do you like to be continued to con be in contact? Don't ask a quick question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll give you a pass with this one. Um, I, I believe Diana put my contact information and I also offer uh, free 15 minute consults. Um, tomaglio.com forward slash coaching. I, I saw some of my students in here. Uh, and then if you, you know, if you want, we can do a whole session where I kind of teach you my process, teach you the best practices and, and, and send you off on your way with some uh, marketing lists in different genres to kind of uh, get you started. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. So this is, this is very good. Um, also coming up, uh, Fight Club, um, August 25th, uh, Richard Dorton, who is Mocap Man from Motion Cap, um, um, Mocap Vaults will be talking about performance capture and how we're doing it on Zoom. Um, but that's, that's coming up. And uh, yeah, if you're interested, we have You Should Do Voiceover coming up in September, that is selling fast. Um, and Mystery to Mastery Fall Session will be starting um, in September as well. So, and we'll be back next, but next first Wednesday here um love that you're all here please um you know please keep on thinking of this as a resource and uh um would love to hear how what resonated for you um it's oh gosh it's time it's it's four minutes after so we're gonna wrap up um stay in touch with your with with other questions um we'll do our best to answer some questions if you don't get them answered come back next month. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, Tom, thank you so much. I'm so excited about all that's coming up. Um, and Dan, always a pleasure to have your most uh, knowledgeable presence here. And Diana, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully she'll be in the background uh, making sure everyone's cool there. And um, we'll see you. We'll see you next month or or next next time. So thanks thanks so much. We'll we'll talk to you soon. Thanks guys. See ya. Thanks everyone.